Welcome to Whistleblowers, where we drop our gloves on the world of sports and come out swinging. Blowing the whistle on all the false starts, illegal throws, and general sports ridiculousness from around the country. But first, the stories we're not leading with. Mouth guards in the NBA. Sure, they protect your mouth. But what's going to protect my eyes from having to watch you do mouth gymnastics with that for over two hours? Basketball shorts. They're not that short. Are they the love seat of activewear? What is the fastest road to the final four? We ask four men in their 60s for directions and get four very different answers. In an effort to address the concerns of its aging fan base, the PGA has redesigned the golf ball to be louder and easier to see. Golf ball over here. Officials for the Iditarod, the world's foremost dog sled race, blamed climate change for this year's poor turnout. Whatever you want to believe. Speaking of melting, let's check in with Michelle, who's down in Miami dealing with some unpredictable weather conditions. Michelle, are you staying safe? Thanks, Coop. It's an hour before tip-off, and as you can see, the conditions could potentially play a role here. Both sides are concerned about the humidity. I mean, it's always the humidity, never the heat, right? <laughs> from where I'm standing, there's a little breeze coming from north to south, but we think that might be the air conditioning units in the arena. Oh, it's always the AC. This is something we're going to keep an eye on as it gets closer to game time. That sounds like a real sticky situation. We'll check back in with you later. For now, though, let's go to the panel as we blow the whistle on college basketball's springtime classic, March Madness. <laughs> Greetings, panel, and thanks for joining the Whistleblowers. We begin with you, overzealous organizer of the office pool. Whew, that's a lot of O's. Indeed. Does anyone ever ask you if you're down with O-O-O-P? Come again? You're down with O-O-P, yeah, you know me! Because, you know, your name sounds like O-P-P. And you think it's funny that my name sounds like a song that glorifies sex with someone else's significant other, sure. I mean, when you look at it that way, it's a lot less funny now. Thinking that you know me. Thinking that you're down with the OOP and you know me. Okay. Wait a second. You're messing with me. Ah! <laughs> OOP. <laughs> wow, this panel got off to a weird start. All right, back on track. Are office pools a good or a bad thing? Office pools are a great thing. They bring people together. They give people something to talk about with coworkers who they would not normally talk to. <laughs> like that one guy from accounting. Exactly. I didn't even know who that one guy from accounting was until he won last year's pool. I mean, the guy picked Wisconsin to beat Kentucky. Who does that? My mom's a Badger, so I always pick them to go really far in the tournament. Now we see each other in the break room, and I'm always like, there he is! Ha! He says that every time. Now you and the overzealous organizer of the office pool have something to talk about. He still doesn't know my name. Nope, but that didn't stop me from cornering you at last year's holiday party, so... Did you know he's only got one hanging testicle? The other one never descended. That happens, but they have some really great-feeling prosthetic options available now. They call them nudicles. But the old single scoop kills at parties, so, you know. Speaking of oversharing, I think it's time we hear from insufferable alumnus. Great to be here, Coop, and even greater to be a part of the big blue bigness. Now, you annoy a lot of people when you talk. Why do you think that is? I don't sweat the petty things, and I don't pet the sweaty things. You sure it's not because you act like you had anything at all to do with the team's success? Are you insinuating that our domination has nothing to do with my message board posts and my following the players on Instagram? There's a lot of likes there, man. I'm tweeting out 140 characters of encouragement every night before they put their sweet little head to the pillow. Well, that's creepy. I'm sorry, uh, who were you? Oh, he's that one guy from accounting that nobody knows, but keeps winning the office pool. It's the one who's always talking those Girl Scout cookies? I like the dosey dos Uh, no, you're thinking of that one guy in legal who never pays up after the tournament. What's with that one guy? Ooh, I know, and the tag right? I once had to hound him for two months to pony up 10 bucks. I mean, really, for 10 bucks? <laughs> you told me at the holiday party you've stolen twice that in post-its alone. I told you that in confidence, Phil! My name is Gerald! Yeah? Let's turn to another perspective. Repeatedly fired college coach. You make bold predictions every year that never pan out. Do you ever worry that people will stop taking your picks seriously? Of course not, Cooper. 
No one gets the bracket right all the time. <laughs> That's like trying to pay for Thin Mints with $50 worth of post-its. It's no more like <laughs> calculating an accounts receivable turnover ratio without factoring in net credit sales. Not really that. Like uh, trying to be friends with a 19-year-old player when you <laughs> graduated from school a decade and a half ago, <laughs> still live off campus and are <laughs> legally uh, prohibited from traveling with the team. <laughs> no. What I was going to say was getting your bracket right is about as tough as it gets in the world of professional sports. You mean amateur sports? Of course. <laughs> amateur, right. It's all love of the game at the college level. <laughs> You. Hey, Coop, before a repeatedly fired college coach starts making any predictions, can we just take a minute and talk about busted bracket paper? Let's make it 30 seconds, Zach. What solutions have you and your twin brother Troy come up with? Yeah, our organization, Beyond Brackets, pairs kids who love to draw with busted brackets looking for a second chance. So many great organizations. Instead of ending up in a landfill, we partner busted brackets with kids who are desperate to doodle. Fantastic. How many partnerships have you fostered? Uh, I got this one, Coop. I'm gonna guess anywhere from 330 to 400,000. 76 doodlers. Yep. Missed it by that much. Everybody is telling me adult doodling books are very therapeutic. That's true. Here's my quest, love. It's from Bumby's rap coloring book. They can be, but sadly, so many of us don't start doodling young enough. I got the tie to match the comb. It took a long time. Heartwarming. I think we can all agree there's a lot of useless good coming from our love of brackets. Great panel, Coop. I didn't even know kids like to color. Let's check back in with Michelle and get an update on those weather conditions. Michelle, how are you holding up? Thanks, Harlan. I am now standing in the poorly lit tunnel outside the visitor's locker room. <laughs> The conditions here are considerably worse than they were out on the floor. So true. The overall color scheme is just gross. How do you think the environment will affect the players' moods? It's hard to say, Harlan. There's a definite stench in the air, which is going to take a toll on anyone who is actively breathing. But I talked to some of the staff just moments ago, and their message to the players was pretty simple. We've been in worse conditions before and made it to the court. Let's go out on the floor and put one foot in front of the other and try to make it out there again. Thanks, Michelle. It'll be semi-interesting to see how that plays out. And now, my in-depth conversation with superstar pep band director, Claire Futz-Buggendorf. Pep bands, they are affectionately known throughout the world of college basketball as the nerds in rugby shirts, whose unwavering enthusiasm for their respective teams is only matched by their passion for face paint and losing their virginity. As another march descends into madness, we had the opportunity to catch up with legendary pep band leader, Claire Futz-Buggendorf. Thank you for coming on to The Whistleblowers. Thank you for having me. So what drives you back year after year to the obstructed views in the crowded section of the arena surrounded by horny instrumentalists? Probably all the close friends I've made over the years. The mascots and the t-shirt cannon launchers and the overall peppiness of the environment. <laughs> I was just reading your book, Best Pepped Secrets, The Band Beyond Curvilinear Forms. What got you off of the marching band field and into the pep band bleachers? The pep band is where the more talented, less coordinated musicians end up. You have a very well-documented anti-trombone policy. Why is that? I find that a certain renegade personality gravitates towards the trombone, and I don't tolerate that in my pep band. Some of your former players claim that you don't like brass instrumentalists in general. Um, that is simply not true. It is a fact that I was once a bassoonist, and I do have a soft spot in my heart for woodwinds, but I do keep in touch with many rotary valve players. So, why target trombonists? Quite frankly, I don't like telescoping slide mechanisms, and I find that the people who play those instruments tend to blow. I notice a distinct change in your tone, and I, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. So, perhaps a little word association. <laughs> What? Trombone. Reckless. D. Fence. Boom, ba, na, 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 na. Hey. Talk to me about your efforts to protect the safety of your peppy pit. 
I don't think enough people realize how dangerous it can be. Well, we've instituted rubberized bell covers, wide frame spit guards, uh, the fall away music stand. I can't see that helping. You'd be surprised. I cut my mouth on one of those and a gallon of blood spewed from my face. Really? <laughs> Give me three adjectives to describe Claire Futz Buggendorf. A vivacious, fun, be on time you're kicked out of the pet band. God, you are sassy. If you were color, what color would you be? I'm thinking like a hot pink. It's like a color that's so aggressive you have to turn away. You're like, ah, it hurts my brain to look at it. It's me. My whistle has been officially blown. Thank you. That's all the time we have for now. Tune in next time as we take an in-depth look at the world of competitive freediving. Sounds out of my leagues. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll interview the world's oldest living professional gymnast and find out how she's spending her 23rd birthday. For Cooper Lee, I'm Harlan Van 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 Van. Thanks for taking the time out.